beautiful humans. My name is Ariane Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon, and welcome to another Piping Hot episode of Sipping the Tea. Where we what, sister? Where we sip the tea and our guests spill the tea. tea. Yeah. Uh, girl, you didn't bring your tea today. What's going on? Um, She's right here. <laughs> you know who's not there? Uh, your little sidekick, neither's mine. But we, we, we digress and we continue. Now, the lady right here, now for our US counterparts, you may not know her, but she is a real housewife of Cheshire. She's a mother, a successful businesswoman, and she has heels higher than your standards. Her words, exactly, honey. Nicole Seely, my love, welcome to Sipping the Tea. Thank you for joining us, my sweetheart. Thank you for having me, actually. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Yes. yes. Okay, girl, we're going to dive right on in and talk about 2020. So 2020 was an interesting time for everyone across the world, but we want to, you know, focus on some positives. So when you look back at that time, what is one takeaway that you had personally and with your career? Yeah, I think... Um, Basically, 2020 was obviously difficult for everybody. Um, but like you guys, um, what did I find positive out of everything was that you kind of learn to adapt. And I think I'm really strong at that. And 2020 was no exception for me. I think that, you know, I just found different ways of doing things. And actually, we got to spend a lot of time with the kids because my kids have mostly moved out now. So they're all back at home for the first period. So that was really positive and really great. I like that. Family time is is definitely so important to, and you know, everyone's busy in the reality of life. So it's kind of like to get that must have been really special for you. Absolutely. And I think the fact that, I mean, my eldest is 24. She's she's moved out. Um, she was just in the process of buying a house in the beginning of lockdown. So she was at home. My middle one's at university. So she was home. Um, to have them all in the house at once was actually really nice. Quite ready for them to leave as well, although I love them very much. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, I like, really feel, girl. Well, what about like when it comes to business? Like, what was a positive takeaway with business? Because even with most people around the world, just even personal things, how it was a struggle. Business was a struggle as well. Yeah, um, my industry, obviously, predominantly, I work in the railway industry, and obviously, we did work all the way through COVID. Um, but the impact was quite large at the beginning. I think we were down to about. 50, 60% capacity. Um, but what I was, what again I did was I put things in place to interestingly the year before. And it's a little bit how we are now working in COVID in smaller satellite offices. So we were really lucky. Um, so it was tightening things up actually, um, you know, plugging some leaking holes where we probably were wasting money that we didn't actually need to. So I was really lucky. I managed to keep everybody still on and haven't had to let anybody go. Um, but yeah, I think it's yeah I think um yeah it's just reusing your brain because you can become a little bit lazy in business your things are going really well maybe you know from time to time you do you know let things slide a little so it really tightened everything up um so I take that as a positive and I was actually really lucky I'd actually only just started housewives so we only got to like episode five when we closed down. So I think I had that outlet as well. So I feel quite privileged that I got to do that through the pandemic. Um, a little bit of an interesting and a different um, experience probably for me than other housewives. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's an interesting. We're going to get to that housewives Yeah, experience. of course, yes. I was like, it, it is interesting that you did film the season through the pandemic as well. Yeah. So we're going to get to that because I find that I find that interesting, but I, I find your journey specifically, because when I started watching Housewives and I've worked with Housewives in the US across the board and I found yours, I was actually surprised that you were on a Housewives show given that your accolades, you know, no formal education, 19 years old, all these businesses, 10 billion pound turnover, like the, the stats are phenomenal to watch you use kind of like your guts and glory to pave your own way. So I want to go back to like the young girl that you were and how you kind of walked into the world of business. Like 
was it just balls to the wall glory that you're like, I'm going to do this? How did no, that not really. Um, I think it's, I mean, I'll, you know, I won't go on too much, but I think I had quite an interesting start, I suppose. Um, you know, my mum didn't have very much. My dad then did become self-made. I was, they were only together until I was one. And I went to live with my dad when I was seven. So I kind of seen both sides, someone who'd made money, my mum that hadn't had any. So I'd lived, you know, very you know different lives um, my dad then did lose all of his money um when i was 15 and i lived on my own from 15 um and had to all of a sudden take care of myself so again that was a different aspect of then not having having and then losing um did i know what i wanted to do no absolutely not um not a clue so i think for young people that are out there that you know at 15 did i know what i wanted to do no um so I knew that I was always very hard working. So I think I always had a good work ethic. The only thing is, I think I always struggled um, to not become bored and to work under somebody because mm-hmm. I always thought I knew best. <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty. Yes. But I kind of went through quite a lot of jobs. And actually, what I think it gave me is a real take on, you know, I'd worked in a bar, uh, you know, I worked in an office, you know, I cleaned um, everything that, you know, you can imagine. And I I could see that I could have easily gone down a different path um, as a young woman, young girl even, um, not having any money. You know, there were easier ways to make money. And that that had approached me, um, and obviously wasn't for me, and it's not a path I chose. But I can see how people living on their own from quite young, how they can go that way. I I chose to go and clean. Um, not everybody wants to do that. Uh, but it gave me a great ground in any way, an opportunity. Um, I did like a beauty course. I did different things. Um, I worked in London, and then. I basically got involved. Um, my partner at the time was working within the rail industry, and a lot of people kept saying, "Oh, do you know somebody? Do you know somebody?" Um, and I thought, "Well, I do know people, but I actually could make money at this. I couldn't type or use a computer when I left school because obviously I left at fifteen. Um, so I completely self-taught myself um, how to type. I couldn't even literally type a letter." Uh, so I did that, I got myself a computer, got, obviously I had a phone, um, and I thought, I, I can do this. And I was, that's how it really started, an opportunity. And as things sort of progressed, um, I realised that I was actually really good at it. I, I was good. Um, I always had quite a creative mind, <laughs> um, which I think really helped me in business. Um, I think that so many creative people think, right, okay, you're creative, just, it means you can't be good at business. Um, I was awful at maths, awful. Um, actually, I'm great at percentages now. I definitely don't want to get that, um, get that, get that money, girl. <laughs> no, but to the to the pound, my my finance director. You know, we always we kind of play games, and uh, she she'll say to me whatever's going on, and I can, I'm in within a percent always. Um, just mentally, I can do it. So you can teach yourself. But what I think in business is really important is that you can sell. Because whether you're selling a product or selling yourself, people are buying into me. They're buying into what I can deliver. And I think through the, you know, the early years of being in my industry, I was I was the only woman that was yeah. in my industry. And I think I've said quite often, I'd, I'd go into meetings and I'm sure they were having a conversation with my breasts, not me. Um, did I take offense at a lot of the things that probably went on um, back then, you know, wouldn't happen today, but they did. And actually a lot of the guys that I worked with now are in high positions. And I think I, whether you like me or not, because in business, you know, not everybody can like you, but I think I'm well respected. And I think that was what I wanted. I didn't worry about whether um, it was a man. Did I need to compete with a man to do my job? I never actually thought about it. I didn't have to act like one or go the other way. Um, yeah. What I chose to do was just be the best that I could. And I knew I could deliver. So clients that I've got now, you know, will say, look, they still can bring me if there's an emergency. I'm still accessible, whether that's to my staff, whether that's to my client. Um, even if I'm busy, they know they can pick up the phone to me. And they said, regardless of things, whether they go wrong, because in life, inevitably, 
if you're selling yourself to someone, you cannot guarantee if your product is a person that it won't go wrong. So it was kind of, don't lie to people, but say to them, if there's a problem, I will resolve it. And I think that's probably my strength. Um, I'm a good, um, sort of not decision, a good decision maker, but I'm, I'm a good problem solver. And I think that's important in business. It's true. Yeah, yeah that is true. They always say in business in or like find a, a solution to the problem with, with yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I love your story because, um, you know, a lot of times when people look at a successful, especially woman, they're like, oh, well, you know, they had it easier. You know, it, it just goes to show like if you have the dedication and you're willing to learn and like you said, sell yourself and be a good person that things can work out. Um, and you're, you're such a hard working woman. Um, you've gone through a lot of things and I kind of want to talk about um, at 25, getting a cancer diagnosis, kind of what went through your brain, being a mother at that time, and you do have a very strong backbone, but you know, something like that can kind of set you back a little bit. So like, walk us through that journey and how you were able to overcome it. Yeah, I think initially, obviously, they didn't, you know, there was no talk that I had cancer. It was, you know, um, and it's a weird one. They actually thought that I was pregnant again and I've been back and forward to the hospital. And actually, the sonographer was incredibly rude to me. Um, she'd said, well, clearly you've miscarried and you've fallen pregnant again. And she was so rude to me. And this is true. I I'd had a couple of laparoscopies and they, you know, just said, well, you must have miscarried. But at this point, they hadn't seen the tumour. Anyway, I can remember, and it was when I first was obviously early days of the business, and I had this little blue pickup truck. And, <laughs> and I never forget, because everyone used to laugh and say, why have you not bought yourself a flash car? And I was like, it's fine. The houses come first, the cars come later. Oh. And uh, I, I left the hospital, and I can remember driving back, and I had a little bit of an accident, not a bad one, but I, and I don't know why. Um, I went over the roundabout and just, you know, took a little corner out of the front of the car, the bumper, and I don't know what made me, but I turned around and drove myself back to the hospital, and by this point, I'm not really a crier, but I was obviously very hormonal from the cancer, which I didn't realise, and I, I went um, back in, and I went, I literally don't know what's wrong with me, but I know something is wrong, and I went, oh. anyway, the... Um, gynecologist who was actually you know I'm still under if you like now um came out and I was in such a state anyway they admitted me and she'd taken me down and just by luck she had done a thesis at university on the cancer that I had in the hospital that I was at they hadn't had a case for 50 years so yeah, yeah. so yeah, so really remarkable. Anyway, they, they moved me to a hospital in London and I still didn't know that it was cancer at all, at all. I thought I had like a baby growing in my arm or something. <laughs> kind of, that's, I was thinking, just get wherever it is. Like, I don't know, it was very, very bizarre. Anyway, I can always remember being in the hospital and I'd gone and I was sat in with a doctor called Professor Newlands, um, who it turns out was a specialist for brain cancer. Anyway, I sat there and I can remember my mum and my partner at the time um, coming in and the, basically they, they said to me, look, um, and it's all in the same day, you basically have this type of cancer. And they kind of fell apart. So I said, look, if the two of you are going to sit there, you need to both pull yourselves together and stop it or go and sit outside. <laughs> so this is honestly, so I made them go and sit outside. Anyway, they took me down. Wow. They, they, yeah, out, go and sit down. Um, but basically, there was four types. I didn't have the first one, didn't have the second. I had the third type, definitely. Um, but they didn't know if I had the fourth, which I would have been incredibly unlucky. It grows all in your organs and there's nothing they can do. Um, so anyway, they, they'd gone to me. We're going to start treatment. And I was like, yeah, I think you go a bit numb. Anyone that you speak to, I think, and certainly I didn't have the waiting. So that was a bit different for me. It was like I found out then and I started the treatment that evening. Anyway, so I was all then wanting to make plans because my, my daughter, my oldest daughter was actually not quite two at the point. So she was very small. And uh, I was like, OK, so I can go home. And when will I come back? You know, they went, oh, no, you're not leaving. You're, you're starting treatment this evening. Um, wow. So it was like, yeah, it was it was really quite scary. And they said, we'll do the other scan to find out if you have the full type, full type after we started the treatment. 
anyway, I, you know, I can remember going through feelings and all I could think is my daughter, my oldest one had this really curly hair and I kept thinking, because they say to you, you can't say you're not going to die because they won't tell you that because it's a question I ask, well, am I going to die? And they said, look, you know, it's, a really, it's very curable, but we can't say that um, because we don't know how it's far it's spread. Um, obviously, they, you know, that's all we can say. But I had a vision of her hair, no one being able to do her hair. And that's the truth. That's all I could think about was if I die, who will be able to do her hair? Because they won't be able to because it's so curly. <laughs> and really, yeah, it was really. So I, I think I was fine. I adapted quite quickly um, and didn't really overthink it. But I did become really sick because I was allergic to one of the drugs. So I had probably a difficult time. I was a patient for in the hospital, which was difficult with a small child for six months. Um, so that but now they treat it differently. So now uh, if you had it now, you could be an outpatient. But yeah, I mean, it gives you a different perspective. But look, at the beginning, they say, don't get stressed out. You know, obviously when you come out, it's not good for you. And you think of all these things, the way you're going to change your life. But I don't think you do or you can because you have to live. You can't worry about it. Um, I do follow up for life probably mostly for research purposes but yeah I'm really lucky that I'm healthy and okay it's a mindset thing though I really believe that because a lot of people who I see come out on the other side were just so like this is just a um this is a moment for me to reset like reevaluate don't take things for granted like I'm strong and I have this so it just goes to show the woman that you are with everything and all the success and everything you've gone through is that you have a very strong mindset to make whatever happen that you want to happen in life. And I feel like that's kind of like a testament in anything that we do. If you can have a strong mindset, of course, we're going to have moments that we're like, oh, you know what? The struggle is real. But if you can say like, I got this, you can pretty much get through anything. I mean, yeah, you're a testament of that. I agree. And I, I think it goes back to like COVID. And I say to people, everyone's like, oh, you're so strong. I'm not really a big crier. Um, I mean, um, but you know, I have days and what I try and say to people, because I get loads of people messaging me about stuff like this. And I say, look, I'm not, you know, I'm not made of stone. You know, sometimes, you know, you get tired. Tiredness is a big thing, isn't it, for everybody? Because I, I always think if you try and have a sleep, um, you know, you do feel a bit better. But try not to make one bad day become a bad week. So, you know, give yourself a break for a day. And if you want to go and sit and cry into your pillow for the day or whatever and have a pyjama day, do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just get up the next day and, and go again. Ooh. I love that. That's a great... I'm like, you need a T-shirt that time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's sick. Well, I think, I think the culmination of every kind of passage of your life that's why I found it very interesting that you ended up on a housewife program. So did I. <laughs> In the sense that like you're very strong willed and you actually do keep it real. And it's it's seen in the, the way that you interact with these ladies. It's like sometimes they can't handle the real. You know what I mean? I really love your perspective on the show being that you don't really edit yourself to create something. You just, who you are, take it or leave it. So tell us about this experience being on a show with all these women and kind of how you kind of found your place because there's been highs and lows, but I feel like now you've kind of really found your place and like driving your own ship now, as opposed to when you came on being, you know what I mean? It's, it's an interesting look at your art. Um, right, so basically, I mean, I'd, I'd been asked since um, series four when I first moved to the area and I was like, absolutely not. I'll be really honest. Um, I've never watched reality TV very much. My husband loved it, loves, loves all the American ones, loves the New Jersey one. So he kind of like was, you know, he, I don't like, oh God, I'm just being really honest. I'd never watched the show. I obviously knew some of the women, um, but I was like, definitely not. And I did worry about whether, how that would be interpreted in my industry, because look, we know there's arguing and drama um, and, and with all reality, sometimes it doesn't give a great take because obviously the, it's only the dramatic bits that are taken out. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, and they just stayed in touch every year they tried. Um, and then we were looking at buying a football club because I love football. Um, my husband and I really share a passion for it. And basically we were in Dubai actually. And I, was, I was laying um, by the pool at the Burj um, enjoying my 
myself and a cocktail um, and they rang. Anyway, we were just chatting because we'd gone for a short break and they rang me again and I said, oh, it's Housewives again. I was, and he was like, you've got to do it this time. He said, if we buy the football club, it would be great advertising. And that's the truth. And I was like, look, he said, even if you do it for one season, it would just be, because he's not going to lie, for a football club um, at that level would have been great publicity. Anyway, um, I was like, oh, no. But as you probably know, um, there's a much longer process to them asking you and it being agreed by NBC, by ITV, by by Monkey. Um, I think people just think, oh, yeah, they asked you and then you're on. Um, So anyway, I I said, look, I'll meet with you. Anyway, so I went and met. We met in the local um, pub down the road. Um, And I was like, okay, so the second we come and do the taster tape, oh, my God, it was the most horrific day of my life. (laughs) I was awful. Awful. I thought, I because I don't even like having my photograph taken. I mean, it's been so cathartic for me, all of this, because my mum and the kids used to say, like, if you die, there are no photos, really. Um, so for someone that didn't like that, I was would have kind of be the person behind the camera, you know. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, it came back. Um, Christmas Eve it was, the producer at Monkey rang me and said, you know, it's been signed off by NBC and ITV. They want you because it was down to like two left. And I went, oh, okay. And he went, is that it? <laughs> I went, oh, is that it? It's like, yeah, it was just that. It's like, is that your response? So I was like, okay. I think I kind of wasn't expecting it, but I, I don't get hugely hugely like everything is just an experience for me i don't get super hyped up yeah so anyway so it still didn't really seem that real the first day of filming i think i walked into the wall about three times (laughs) and and my husband sat in the corner going oh my god that's awful and i was like i can't do this i can't do this what am i doing um and the first episode funnily enough I I literally sat outside the living room door on the floor watching it hiding (laughs) I was like I couldn't bear it (laughs) I couldn't bear it so yeah and it's been good for me in that way um but that's how I ended up on the show um my husband's fault (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh Wait, speaking of your husband, which has become like the breakout star of the show. He really is. Yes, for real. Like, how did you guys meet? You know, what is how, what was you guys' journey like? And I mean, clearly you guys make such a great team together. What everyone, you know, inspires to have is like a, a partner that is like that ride or die. So how did you guys even meet? Yeah, to, to be fair, I've been married before because um, I'm nine years older than Joe. And to be fair, I was having time out. <laughs> and I was out on a school night, um, not really looking to meet anybody, um, quite happy. And it's really strange. He was out with a group of friends, um, and one of them was, not that he was out with, because uh, wasn't out with the next girlfriend, but the group of friends. So she was there, and I was out with a guy that was a friend of mine, but not a boyfriend. And, yeah, I kind of gone to the bar, and he was trying to push in, basically, to get a drink. But I can buy my own drink. So I'd said no about five times. And in the end, I just said, look, if you want to buy me a drink to get to the front of the bar, feel free, fine. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was really weird. I wasn't looking to meet anybody. Um, we we moved in together three weeks after we met. So I'd gone from not wanting to meet anybody at all um, to, yeah, he put my Christmas tree up. So I think we met in the November. He'd come and put my Christmas tree up and never left. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> those are the best stories. I feel like the, I feel like partners who always just kind of weren't expecting to meet and things happen so fast. They have the best relationships. I feel like people who wait like two years, three years, four years to make things happen. It's kind of like not all stories, but it's all. I feel like I meet so many success stories of like how did this happen and oh, we're here. Like that's that's it. It. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm quite spontaneous. I'm, I'm actually very controlled, but equally, I think that's what's really quite strange with me. And you know, I am. I'm probably the one that is reasonably controlled, but there's like, I am very, very, very spontaneous. Once I make my mind up, I'm doing it. That, that's. I think it's a good balance, though. I think that's a nice balance, and I think that's starting to show on the show that we're getting to see 
a little bit more of you because it feels so fast paced, the church of yeah. It's like, duh, 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 and we don't get to really dig into yeah. who you are and, and like the guts and glory of it. So it's like when people are coming at you, I'm like, what, they can't take that you're the realest bitch on the block? Come on now, what's going on? Right, the real bitch, speaking of the realest bitches on the block, because I actually think and I see now, do you miss Dawn Ward on the show? Because I feel like you two together were a dynamo little moment. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting one. I think everybody expected us not, because she's one of the ones I didn't actually know. I, we had mutual friends. Um, but we didn't know each other. And I think everybody really, really expected us not to get on at all. They, they didn't. But, but I actually don't mind anyone who's, um, you know, straight um, and says what they think. And I, I'm married to Joe, so I really don't take offence easily. You have to have thick skin. Um, he's always giving me stick. So, yeah, I mean, we, we got on really well um, from the start. People ask this all the time. Do you know what she would have loved? I think different circumstances. I definitely think she would have loved to have stayed and filmed a couple of more seasons with me because I think she felt the same. It would have been, but obviously circumstances, and she's doing obviously going to go on and do her own stuff. Yeah. Um, and and you know what? It, it's not the journey that's supposed to happen at the moment. So I don't like to dwell on what is. We've actually got a nice friendship. Yeah. I'm friends with you know the other girls, and we do, we do socialize. Um, and each of us are unique, and it, and it is a very unique environment, I think. Uh, I don't excuse people when they tell fibs. Um, there is no excuse for that. But, I, but obviously, stuff is a bit frustrating when, obviously, we film for 14 hours and you're only seeing an hour. Um, but you can't do anything about that. So the only things that they can put on are the things that you say. So I think you learn quickly. Um, that you know, you try not to leave yourself so open. I suppose you do learn that. Um, I don't. I don't feel like there's anything like the weekend just gone um, with the episode. You know, I absolutely meant what I said, apart from one word. You know, um, oh, what was that? <laughs> crystal ball throwing. <laughs> what was that? Fame hungry could spring to mind. Um, yeah. But yeah, so what I'm saying is I wouldn't then go back and say, well, actually, I didn't mean it. Because no, I actually meant it, but I didn't mean the other word. Um, and I don't like to swear that much because at the end of the day, but, you know, when we go, when us guys went on the trip, I was a bit PMT as well. So that's never good. <laughs> I think you're living your truth in the moment always. Yeah. And I think that's all you can be and can do. And I think the cast is very, it's very dynamic. It's, it's an interesting... Uh, dichotomy of, of life and, and friendships and, and, and what have you. How is the one thing that is different, and before we wrap up, I find it interesting and I want to know the logistics side of things, because you guys still aren't touching on camera. There's no, the huggy, like it's seen, yeah. what is going on there? Because all of our American counterparts are actually hugging and touching and interacting. Yeah, yeah, I think um, we're still, it's been because obviously we're filming a little bit behind and I, I think I was sort of saying that to you know people out there that we obviously filmed when we were still very restricted um yeah. yes we're COVID tested so I think certainly the earlier episodes you see more of that um but the guidelines have been very strict so it's been a tough it's actually been quite good fun and we obviously did a staycation rather than going away um, but I think the show has done remarkably well to get it out. And I think it's a bit of a transitional one, this one, because I think you've got to appreciate that big characters left. I think we've had COVID. Um, and let's be honest, in COVID, not all of us have had huge amounts going on. So the storylines are going to be a little bit more watered down because no one's going anywhere. Um, so it does obviously have an impact. And, you know, not for me. I mean, I seem to find trouble without trying. I was like, <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> I don't know, you're hanging on your back. Come on. I know, I know, I know. But look, there's an element, I think, when new people come in and, you know, but I think uh, I let it slide the first one, but I am going to address it. I'm never going to be, um, because I, I believe in the person that I am. Sometimes it comes might come across um, as if I'm being hard, but it's not. And I'm not going to cry just for a bit of attention. I'm not going to do those things. If people can't see past that, and you're going to get people that have got fans, of, of the other people and you know but I think I'm old enough you know I'm going to be I'll be 53 in 
three years. So I'm, you know, getting to, yeah. Um, 53 in three years, honey. Let's, let's 52, 50 in three years. I was like, I was like, wait. 15, three years. What I'm saying is I'm getting to that stage of my life. I feel sorry for, you know, young ones. I don't get a huge amount of attacking, I don't think, on social media. Yes, you'll get trolls. You know their fake accounts, you can see. Um, I like to think I'm intelligent enough to see through it. Uh, no one wants to be called names, I mean. But am I bothered? Look, you know, I'm not. Um, so that, that for me is OK. I feel, do feel sorry for the young ones, though, that, you know, get a lot of trolling. Um, say I don't. And yeah, I just want people to look at the show and be able to enjoy it and read between the lines. Look, listen, sometimes there's din been dinner parties where you leave. And I think last season, after I left the final episode, I was not sure I would come back. We went, we managed to go away. We were in the Maldives for three weeks. And I thought, actually, you know, is this what I want to do? And I, I, I didn't sign till very, very, very late. Um, and yeah, because it is tiring. I think by the end of it, you know, I filmed so much. I mean, I know it's a good thing, but the more you're involved, the more you're filming. But I mean, you're trying to hold down a job, you have got family, and four or five times a week you're filming hair, makeup, pickups, and in difficult circumstances. Um, so yeah, but this one's been, I think, a lot lighter for me. I've, I've felt more comfortable in front of the camera. So yeah, everything's an experience. Take the positive. That's, I, I love that, but I think, you know, what make, makes you um, so different is that you had so much happening and you had an establishment before getting on reality TV, so you understand yes. the business aspect, you know what I mean? So, and, and it shows, it shows, you know, you're just, you're just so much further ahead than people who've been on for seasons because they're trying to figure it out now, but you're like, I own businesses, I get how this goes, so I get this is a business, I'm going to have fun. I'm staying in my lane, but you you get you get what it is. So yeah, I have got for the first time. So this it would have been this season, but because of COVID, um, it didn't happen. But for the first time, I actually did a product which I'm really excited about because I've always dealt with people. Everything I've done's always been people. So it's you know I'm quite excited. We're doing it together, my husband and myself. Um, so hopefully, if I definitely come back next season, um, you'll see that because I think. Um, the one thing it's a bit frustrating I think that the fans have not really seen my work side of it and I do for some of the other girls you've seen a lot of that um, and for me I suppose it's a bit frustrating but it's just the way things have panned out so hopefully you know say if I'm in next season in next season they'll see a bit more of the business side I think that's important and I think that yeah and I think that's the one thing missing about you on the show yeah. that we get to see the Yeah. happen because they're not you're not going anywhere they're going anywhere so think if, well, you're like the lightning bolt of the cast it, it hits you everywhere <laughs> you go oh. well speaking of your businesses and everything that you have going for people who are living under a rock um go ahead girls spill the tea let everybody know where they can follow you at where they can get your prop the whole nine girls spill the tea Oh, okay. So my business is NTS Premier Services, which is railway. I mean, I don't, you're not going to get many products from there, but um, it's, it's a railway construction business. We've just sold the gyms that we had, actually, because we had gyms that we've um, just recently sold. Um, my website, nicolesealy.co.uk, um, we started to put products on there. So that's quite new. I kind of did that within lockdown, and we've just had the website redone. And what I wanted to do was give a platform to people. It doesn't matter whether they're working from home. Um, so it's for all products, as long as I like them. So anybody can go onto the platform and sell through the platform. So that it just gave people somewhere, you know, that I could endorse their products. You know, if, it, you know, if they sell, then there's a percentage, but otherwise they can just go on for free. Um, so we did that, which I was sort of felt was something giving something back. Yeah. And the new product I can't tell you about, but just watch this space. So follow me on Instagram, which is Nicole Seeley74. Um, and obviously you'll be able to find out what's going on from there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, yes, yes, yes. Well, take it away, Ari. And um, well, where can everybody follow you at? They can yeah, call Nicole. Me Matt Dillon, 1983. Matt. Oh, you're 83. You would be. <laughs> you guys can follow me. I'm just jealous. <laughs> you look 
You look smashing, doll. Come on, honey. Thank Give you. me a flick. <laughs> Where can everybody follow you, Ariane? Um, you all can follow me across the board at Ariane Andrew. And of course, follow Sipping the Tea TV show on Instagram, Sipping the Tea TV one on Twitter. And of course, subscribe, like, comment, share with all your friends this amazing episode. And for our vis uh, audio people, you can listen to it on all digital streaming platforms. But we'll catch you guys same time. Same place of another episode of Civility TV Show. Look at that.